Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of a Tom Pop featuring Fat Man and Little Boy. My name is Stephen Corka. One. It is early in the morning right now. Well, it's not super early, I would say. It's early for us, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's about 10 a.m. right now here. Uh, and uh, it is Tuesday, actually. Endgame came out th- uh, this past Thursday. And a uh, highly anticipated movie. Uh, everybody and their mother went to go see it. Literally, I think a third of the world went to go see this movie because it took in... A whopping $1.2 billion in its opening weekend, crushing the number one record, which was held by Avengers Infinity War, by about half that amount. That alone is fucking crazy. Right? Mm Mm-hmm. No, dude, you got to talk. This ain't going to work. This ain't going to work. This ain't going to work. You got to wake up and get involved How more. crazy was it? No, seriously, get involved more. There's Come nothing on. to me and Boy involved Come on. in that one. Come on, you got to talk a little more than that. $1.2 billion, you say? That's incredible. That is, well, that is incredible. So here's the question, kids. Okay, it uh, it's probably going to be Titanic because Infinity War came in third place right behind Titanic by like $50 million. But Avatar... Another story. Avatar took in two point almost eight billion dollars. Do you think it'll it'll beat Avatar? Even if it does, it's not going to be Gone with the Wind. Well, if we if we adjust for inflation, why wouldn't you adjust for inflation? What is Gone with the Wind if you adjust for inflation? Like four over four billion dollars. Is it really that? Amount? Yeah, in nineteen thirty nine. That's insane. Like black people weren't allowed to go to the movie theaters. That's insane. I mean, there was racism and shit, and it still made four billion dollars. And there based on white people. Though. There weren't any. There weren't anywhere near as many theaters either. Yeah, that's or some, people. That's, that's something that's really insane to me. That is insane. Yeah. So it's a good movie. Ever see that movie? Gone with the Wind? Yeah. Yeah, I did. It's good. You know what? You know Damien at the Pine Store? He always plays that movie. I'm really? like, Damien, out of all the movies you could choose from here at a comic store, why are you putting on Gone with That's the Wind? That's a good movie. I've put in Casablanca a few times. <laughs> Anyways, all right. And after that, let's talk about Endgame, guys. Okay, first of all. I No, John Singleton died. John Singleton did die, yes. That was awful. Yeah. He's so young, though. 51, he was. 51? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. By did the way, you ever see Boys in the Hood? Uh, I did. Great movie. Great movie. Yeah. Great movie. How about his other stuff? It was never like as good, yeah. but you know. Yeah. Baby boy, I guess. Off topic though. We'll save that Poetic for the, we'll save that we'll save that for the for the Instagram live stuff. Yeah, that was sad. Uh back to Infinity War though. Okay, so there are so many things I have a problem with this. I think Wonski agrees he's got a bunch of problems with the two. We no, are I, I loved it. We are part of the minority. Uh so let's start off with what we loved about the movie because after that I'm gonna go on my soapbox. Uh what did you love about the movie? Everything. Stop. Just stop. 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 Do not I be that bitch. I thought the time travel was well Watsky, done. don't be that bitch right now. Stop. Why do you always do this? You, well, did this? you did this at Captain Marvel. Like, stop. You did this at Black Panther. Just stop. It Just was a great movie. Stop. Stop. The people I, don't... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What they, do you want me to say? I, I, want you to, I want you to tell people exactly what you told me. I loved it. I can't wait to Fuck see it you, again. Fuck you, dude. Fuck you. Stop. Um, what well, I loved about I want to know what you loved about the movie. And are don't we, be like, everything. Are we doing spoilers? spoilers? Absolutely. This is spoiler-filled, guys, okay? So if you haven't seen the movie, stop watching right now and go watch it. But, like I said, $1.2 billion. There's a good chance you saw the movie by now. But maybe they didn't. I it, know a few people that haven't. Well, by the time I uploaded this, I'm sure they'll, they'll, they'll have watched the movie. So what did you love about the movie? <laughs> what Curse these. <laughs> I thought you were ready to cry. I was like, "Wow, he's gonna, he's gonna go, he's gonna go in deep." Um. <laughs> uh, my favorite, my favorite scene was uh, Captain America picking up Thor's hammer. That was, and unexpected. the battle, the battle, the 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 way they choreographed that, and had, they handled it really well. It worked. You love the whole battle. I'm sorry. You love the whole battle. I wish it was longer. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. I feel like the first epic. two hours of the movies should have been shortened, and well, the battle should have been extended. The battle was definitely epic. So, uh, so what I love about the battle, I think Captain America with a hammer was unbelievable. Yeah. Um, everything about that battle, I think Iron Spider in kill mode was fucking awesome. Yeah. A uh, Scarlet Witch showing her power. 
Yeah. For like the two seconds they gave her, I wish they would give her more. She's awesome. Yeah, she is. Uh, the uh, Olsen, the 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 actress that Elizabeth, plays her, I like her name nails is, yeah. it, dude. Yeah. And and to be honest, before we saw her in Age of Ultron, she was in the Godzilla movie, which mm. was horrible. Yeah. You know, and and we were like, oh god, this is gonna be bad. And the kid that played Quicksilver was the lead in Godzilla, also. Yeah. And we were both like, God, well, yeah. oh. But they turned. But out she to be she good. nailed it. Um. Yeah. So I liked all that. Uh, I felt Black Panther could have gotten a little more. He didn't as get well. anything. All he did was pick up the uh, glove a and quick run. chase scene. Yeah, for him. So yeah, surprised. Uh, Captain Marvel surprisingly didn't get a lot of screen also, time. Also, Christopher Pratt like just kind of got yeah. yeah thrown to the side there. Yeah. So, but that so I mean they could have done way more with the battle because we could have seen like Black Panther giving him a little extra in that battle and, yeah. and the Guardians just came back. Yeah. So you know, um, I loved all that. Uh, I'm. Uh, I really. Oh, and man. Paul Rudd was awesome the whole movie. If it wasn't for Paul Rudd, I would. I don't think I would have liked it at all. Really, I mean, Paul Rudd is is good in pretty much anything he's in. Yeah, and, but he, and the Ant Man movies are great. But know? he he's the one thing that kept reminding me this was a movie. Yeah, yeah. Instead of just like fan service. Yeah. No, absolutely. Paul Rudd was great. Uh, the battle was great. Another thing that uh, Captain America fighting Captain America. Yeah, that was that was that was great. And they handled it well, like showing the Loki thing, and they, they actually tied it in pretty cool. Yeah. So, guys, if 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 you don't know, this movie is heavily focused on time travel, and I think and the original Avengers and the original Avengers movie. How, how about how they handled it, Hawkeye? Hawkeye was great. And turn him into Ronan. That was awesome. Hawkeye was yeah. great. Finally, Hawkeye didn't seem like a bitch. He got some screen time that was worth a damn. Because if you guys remember, in Avengers 1, he basically became Loki's minion uh, yeah. for the whole movie, for, for the most part. Uh, Avengers 2, I don't even remember what he did in that movie. I thought uh, the scenes with him and Natasha was really good, too. Yeah. I liked the, the little well, fight scene. I, always th I thought they had a good dynamic. They always. do have a good dynamic. Yeah, yeah. So. Josh Whedon did a good job tackling their, their dynamic as well. Sure. Um, but yeah, this movie is, is is focused heavily on time travel. We knew that going in. We knew there was going to be a smart Hulk. You know, we had hints of that. Uh, you mentioned Tony making a glove for the stones, which we saw that in the movie as well. Um, and we all knew someone was going to die. You know, um, we all assumed it was going to be Cap. I lo also love that uh, how they handled the whole Tony Stark thing when he comes back from space. He looks skinny as fuck. Oh, he looked, he looked, he looked, he looked horrible. Yeah. Like horrible. They, they did that really well. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Like, I'm going to miss Robert Downey Jr. And here's what's insane, yeah, spoilers, right? spoilers, kids. He's Com dead. Compare Robert Downey Jr. playing Tony Stark, who's been obviously the head of the Avengers, right? Yeah. So I love the fact that, and I never considered this when thinking about what was going to happen in this movie, that the whole Marvel Universe started with Iron Man. Yeah. And Robert Downey. Yeah. And this was him sacrificing himself for everyone. It ends with his death. Yes. A great story arc. Yes. Robert Downey has been a part of all the movies. He's been fantastic. Fantastic. How char He's like super charismatic. I want to see him on screen. I'm never bored when he's on. Yep. Compare that to Captain Marvel. Oh. Captain Brie Marvel. Larson is awful. Awful. And, and, and it was one of the things I hated about the movie. She's just not charismatic yeah. at all. No, she's, she's a bitch. She's overpowered. Yeah. Every time she's on screen, everyone has to stop what they're doing and stare in wonder. It's yeah. fucking stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very, uh, you know, yeah. I'm not, I'm not into it either. And it's not a, it's not a pompous, it's not chauvinistic. It's just, it has nothing to do with that. She, her care, she, she, yeah. she has no range of emotion, dude. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. It's really, even Thor. Thor was, oh, by the way, how would you think of Fat Thor? Love Fat Thor. Fat Thor was good. Fat Thor was great. It reminded me of Fat Spidey and Into the Spider Verse. Yeah, yeah. Fat Thor was great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, it, it got a little weird, a little hokey. Sometimes, yeah. But yeah. Uh, but it was pretty good. And uh, Rocket Raccoon is man. Rocket's great. He was really funny. Rocket's great. He 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 kind of he kind of brings a little reality to everything. Like, sure, when like, he's running from Natalie Poor after yeah. taking the stone, yeah. that was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Because <laughs> he looks like he's stalker. He like walks after. It was great. Yeah, yeah, no, it was it was definitely good. So, uh, s spoilers again, kids. Heavily heavy time travel happening in this. We all knew that's what's gonna go. And uh, the movie had some great moments. It's definitely in the top ten, if not the top five Marvel movies ever. Oh, it's for sure for top five for me. Is it for you? I don't know if it is for me, but uh, just the the things that they did well, they did really well. The th I, absolutely, but they did so many things wrong. There's some really bad stuff. They did so many things wrong in this movie. Are we nitpicking? We are nitpicking, absolutely. No, but is is our criticism unfair? I don't think I don't think uh, you guys tell us. We're gonna we're gonna go we're gonna because go through like right the, now. the the 
the critics love this movie. Everybody is loving this movie, and that's one thing that's pissing me off. Well, the people behind us went through an emotional roller coaster. Listen, the theater, first of all, that's the first thing I didn't like. Like, going to these movies on opening night like we did, which, by the way, we went to Regal Kendall Village, which is one of the worst theaters I've ever been to. So uncomfortable. Oh, my God. So uncomfortable. So unorganized. Yeah. Like, getting in the theater felt like 1995. No. You know, lines out the door. It's like, I thought we get this pre-sale ticket thing so we avoid this shit now. Right, right. You know, that didn't happen at all. Anyway, so fuck you, Regal Kendall Village. Anyways, um, I, I don't know. Not, real quick, off topic. Why do all the movie theaters in Miami have the old school seats, but all the movies in Broward have the really crying? I know, it's backwards. Yeah, like Dolphin Mall has the old school seats, Regal Kendall Village, yeah. Sunset Place, they all have the old school seats. Dude, if we don't watch movies in Broward, I'm not going to watch anymore. I, I, I can't believe that. It's weird. It's very weird. I don't understand why. Yeah. Anyway, so, all right, back up, back on topic, guys. So, um, first of all, we brought up Captain Marvel. I didn't Wait, like- well, hold on. We're not, that's it for the things we love? I, th- I feel like there was so much more. I mean, maybe... That was great. The Stan Lee cameo. Stan. Unexpected. Which we didn't really even get to uh, enjoy because the minute he comes on, the theater screamed and cheered so much that we couldn't even hear what he said. Look, I'm, I'm usually a hater for that. That's why I don't watch movies with Rich, right? Because I, I hate that shit. Oh, that's, like, all, that, that's all Bats he does is the, fucking... The, the, yeah, 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 yeah. the clapping, the yelling, uh, I hate it. Uh, but when Captain America picked up that hammer and the theater erupted, I felt it. Listen... I that felt, was a great moment. I felt it too, but let me ask you a question. Did you get the same excitement for the movie or at least that moment that you got in the first five minutes of Bumblebee? Because I didn't. The first five minutes of Bumblebee, I don't think I'll ever feel that for any other movie. Um, <laughs> like, <laughs> Cap, I, I Captain America picking up the hammer and knowing that it was his. Oh, But here's the thing, though. I was under at that moment under the assumption that he was going to die. Yeah. So him picking up the hammer was super emotional for me. Yeah. And then he doesn't fucking die. Yeah. Maybe if I knew he wasn't going to die, I wouldn't have cared as much. Nah. I don't know. As it stands, it's my favorite moment. At least in the Marvel Universe, my favorite moment. Hey, really? Your favorite moment in the Marvel yeah. Universe? I don't know. I can't say that for because me. Because he's like... And then I, they fucking ruin... Um, we'll talk about that later. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, all right. So... <laughs> I'm sure we'll come up with some more good moments, but let's start with everything. Let, let's. It was nice seeing the ancient one. That was great. Great listen, job. Listen, even though prof- this movie is filled with so much fan service and yeah. so much, so many nods back to the past ten years of their twenty-one or twenty. For those movies. people that say that you don't have to watch any of the other Marvel movies, like you're fucking dead wrong. People are going to be lost in this. I think if you don't know anything about the other movies, like for example, you're be lost. if you don't it, see it, Doctor it, Strange, you're fucked. Yes. Yes. Uh, if you don't see the whole phase two, you're fucked. I mean, it, Thor: Dark World. If for you, the love of God, I know. I can't. They went. That was bold to go back to that movie. Yeah. Yeah. If they if, like a lot. If you just see Avengers, basically. Okay. Oh my God. We're we're all over the place right now. Kind of like. Oh. Anyway. So let's start with the let's start with the core. My core issue. Okay. Look. If you didn't see the after credit scene. Where Scott Lang gets trapped inside the quantum zone. Yeah, you, you have, have no idea what's happening. Yeah, you have no idea. What's and that's happening. an after credit scene. Oh, and I'm glad. I'm glad you just brought that up because that is my first gripe with the movie. What's that? My first gripe is basically the chance of a rat running across a control f- surface in a van saves the universe. Not me. You like that. Not that I like it, but I understand There's an ex- there could be an explanation for it. All right, if we remember, at the end of Ant-Man Wasp, Scott Lang gets caught in the quantum realm, and all that equipment is outside the truck. Okay. So clearly, and that was the equipment that needed to be pressed or whatever to bring him to back. To bring him back out, correct. Somebody gathered it all up, put it in the truck, put it in storage, turned it off, or whatever the fuck it is. You're going to tell me no one, it was a rat that did it? Just by chance? That pushed the button? And that five years later, it still holds electricity? Sure, it was well built. Listen. I mean, listen, the him part, listen, the, the guys, Dr. Pym particles still work after like 70 fucking sure, years. Sure, of course. Guys, this is fiction, all right, first of all, but we're going to nitpick fiction. We understand it's not real and blah, blah, blah. But right, it, so, but, but the thing I love about the Marvel... So it, it, listen, it, it, hold on, let me finish. The thing I love about the Marvel movies, at least the earlier Marvel movies, was they brought a sense of realism. Like, if this really existed on in the world, how would it go down? That's how Iron Man was. He built a suit, and like he actually put it on, and you saw him engineer it, and that's what made it amazing. Because it made you think, hey, someone could actually do this. Like Chris Nolan's Batman. So how about this? How about in the future we find out that was Loki? That was the rat? 
I, I mean, or in the future, one of the watchers breaks. No th- protocol, and the watcher. I right, time makes up. There are no watchers except for a cutscene in Guardians of the Galaxy with Stan Lee. We don't know that there's no watchers. Then we would have seen them. At, I mean, we're gonna get we Celestials introduced, them. and we, it doesn't matter. We would maybe they chose not to show them. They should have. It would have been how amazing would it have been to see a watcher in the in in the background? But but just here, watching. Okay, so so here's the thing. What if it was a watcher? It wasn't a watcher, dude. Because watchers don't know that. Don't, they don't interefere. But right, one of them breaks. Yeah, the it, Utah. So, what is hold on, in Utah? comics it was unprecedented. No, the the, the, one, the the one guy Utah yeah. always did. Okay, yeah. maybe yeah. it was him. Whatever, fuck off. Anyways, so that's my. So fr- it's explained. I, look, all right, whatever. I don't like the rat. What don't you like? What we're gonna take turns here. Go. What don't I like? I yeah. hate I, Professor Hulk. Ah, oh, agree so much. Not, not just Professor Hulk. Let me rephrase that. Mark Ruffalo. Uh agree also one hundred and fifty percent. Uh number one, it wasn't. Prof- like Hulk, it was Mark Ruffalo. The whole movie. The whole movie is great. I see Captain America. I see Iron Man. I see Mark Ruffalo. Yeah, as part of the Avengers. Agreed. Agreed. Um, just the way it looked, it was really off-putting. It wasn't completely right. It looked and like then, him. It looked like him. Then his whole attitude, the whole Mark Ruffalo thing, like yeah. when uh, and the whole thing when he goes like the like when he sees a yeah. Hulk smashing the thing, how and he's. I, I mean, that was a funny moment. I will I, say I that. hated that. I thought that was a funny moment when we saw when he saw his past self act like literally like just a, a oh, Hulk smash. Yeah. yeah. But I think one of the things that makes the Hulk a great character is the whole Jekyll and Hyde persona. Right. Just the struggle he has internally with trying to find his humanity in this monster that he is. Hostage to half the time. Right, but this lets Professor Hulk. Yeah, but but, but with Professor Hulk, that's that's, this, a, that's this allows, no, I mean, this allows Mark Ruffalo to just be Mark Ruffalo, and yeah. it's, and it was awful. And, and and the thing that upsets me more about it is like, okay, so this is the future. We're uh, we're not going to get the Savage Hulk again, like because because they. Well, the, it, the the rumors are is that Feige wants to bring in She Hulk, that uh, Banner is going to pass the torch to his cousin. She Hulk. Yeah, but Hulk doesn't die. We all know that. Like, it, neither does Thor. But I can't imagine him being in the universe much longer. Listen, I'm just saying, like, like Hulk. Ugh. Like, we're never gonna get that crazy Avengers, Avengers Age of Ultron Hulk again. Maybe it'll be rebooted one day. I'm maybe we'll see. Yeah, I, I'm sure we'll be. Yeah, we'll be old men probably. But yeah, mm-hmm. we'll see Cap and Iron Man again for sure. But the, I agree with you. Uh, Professor Hulk, no good at all. And basically because of Mark Ruffalo, it's kind of like Thor Ragnarok. I love Thor Ragnarok except for Mark Ruffalo. Yeah. And, and because of Mark Ruffalo, Thor Ragnarok gets knocked down. And, he ruined it. In in my list of of where it stands. We should do like now one of something we love because I keep remembering things I love. We didn't spend enough time talking. Go about on, t- talk about what you love. I don't have a lot of things. Rescue. You liked Rescue. Unbelievable. Really? Yeah. I didn't like Rescue. I was shocked and I loved it. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I mean, she was all right. You know, she what? had her moment. It was great after all these years of just being the, you know. Here's my problem with rescue, and not just her, but basically the way Kevin Feige and Disney and the Marvel Universe tackle their heroes. For some reason, they feel the need to take helmets and masks off all the fucking time. And during this huge fight, they had them on for most of the time. <laughs> Listen. If you and I were in that fight, we would never take our fucking helmet off. The fact that we saw Gwyneth Paltrow's face at all during that time. Right, but, but you know, they need... For, I, I excuse them because uh, how, what percent of that theater do you, know, do you think knew that was Rescue? I understand that, but still... I, I mean, even a lot of comic book fans might not know who Rescue... I mean, she's such a minor character. Yeah, it was good to see her. I just... I And the design, the suit, the way... The, the, the way suit looked great. The her, suit looked great. The way the her weapons... Uh, yes. It was fantastic. It was good. It was good. Right. It was good. I'm not going to take away from Back that. Back to things you hate. Back to things I hate. All right. Um, I'm saving the big one for the last. The big one's for last. The big one's for last. <laughs> the big one. Uh, uh, I'm, oh, I'm lost right now. Now you threw me off with that. The oh. women getting together. Uh, wait, oh, A4? No, Captain A-Force. Marvel. I'm going to go with Captain Marvel, sure. guys. Uh, I will... Here's something I love. I love the fact that Captain Marvel was not the savior. I love the fact that she was not the centerpiece of this movie because we all believed she was going to be going in. You know, we all thought she was going to be the one to tackle Thanos and be like, what the fuck? That's the end of it. But no, she appeared in the beginning of the movie and and then at the end of the movie, and that's it. And she was there to show some muscle for a little bit. But 
Uh, that's it. But I did not like her at all for the same reasons you mentioned. She's just very... Yeah. Bland. Yes. There's and, no range. Yeah. And we're going to see more of her because her movie made over a billion dollars. But something I love, since I'll follow your trend now that I'm thinking about it, I love the fact that they chopped Thanos' head off in the first 15 minutes of the movie. <laughs> and let me tell you what. I'm not going to lie to you. the line? That I'm was not, great. I'm not going to lie to you. I, I went for the head. That's uh-uh. great. I'm not going to lie to you, and I don't know what you were feeling in the moment, but the minute Thor cut his head off, I was lost. I'm like, sure. I don't know what this movie's about anymore. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. I am fucking lost. Anyways, what did you hate? How forced that scene came, That the A-force scene was. It was forced. It was really, really forced. No like, pun intended. Look, so look, man. Yeah. A-Force, for you guys that don't know, is female Avengers. I'm not a misogynist by any means. Mm-hmm. I believe a woman can do anything a man can, usually sometimes better, sometimes worse, right? We're built differently. I'm not, I, and I don't mind female-led movies. Like, some of my favorite movies ever made happen to have a Alien. strong female lead. Alien, Alien right? Alien I'm stuff. playing right now Alien, uh, I'm going through Alien Isolation again, the video game, which should be an Alien movie, by the way. It has, every, it's beautiful, Steve. Mm. And uh, it's it's Ripley's daughter is the main, and it's awesome. Yeah. Like, and, Terminator and Alien is one too. of my favorite, right? Yeah. Terminator, another one of my James favorite Ca- sci-fi James movies. Cameron, always, always right. an advocate for female. And, and, and so, like, I don't have a problem with female-led movies. In fact, I've been advocating one of those people that believes that Black Widow should have gotten her own movie forever ago, right? Yeah. Because she fits that character great. Yeah. And I would love to have seen a backstory on what happened with her and Hawkeye. I think a Black Widow Budapest. Hawkeye movie, like yeah. a Black Widow Hawkeye movie, would have solved a lot of things. Yeah. Especially for those actors, because remember, Jeremy Renner was complaining that he wasn't a focus. Yep. And Black Widow should have had a movie forever ago, right? Mm-hmm. That scene was forced. None of these women had, most of them had never interacted before, had never known who they were. And then just coming together for that moment felt forced, right? And so here's my problem with it feeling forced. Feeling forced means that it was a, it was politically motivated. Yes. Right? It wasn't, yeah. they didn't come together because of the story. So a statement was being made. I don't want a statement in the middle of the best fucking fight scene I've ever seen. Yeah. So I hated it. And I loved what I did. I love other than Captain Marvel, which she shouldn't be, that Scarlet Witch is, is being represented as the probably the most powerful being on Earth, which in, in the comics, Scarlet Witch is. Oh, Scarlet Witch. I th- yeah. sorry, for some reason, I'm thinking Black Widow. No, Scarlet Witch. And Scarlet Witch is, is probably, I mean, would you say she's pro- definitely the most powerful X-Men, maybe other than Phoenix? Uh, she's super proud. She could rewrite reality. Right. So yeah. uh, I, I love that. Doubt. And I think Thanos addressed that in Infinity War. Sure. You know? Yeah. That that you know. Did. So um, so I did hate the A fours, but speaking about strong women, I love Scarlet Witch, and I wish. Uh, and Nikoya is it Nikoya? Is it Nikoya? Nikoya, um, the girl from Walking Dead. Deny. We we'll just call her. Michonne. Michonne. She's great too. I gotta learn her name. Honestly, I, I think it's, it's embarrassing. A, Deny is her real name, and I think Nikoya is is the Black Panther character she plays. Okay. Yeah. Um. All right. Um. I can't think of what I hate because I'm just thinking. I, I, dude, I just got to go into it, dude. No, no, don't go into it. Dude, dude, that's that's, that's going to be the ending. There's that's other that's all I can think of that I hate. No, there's more things. And it's, there's so much about it. There are most things, more things to hate, more things to love. How about this? How about Robert Redford coming back? Pierce. Great. Right? How about the Hail Hydra, Captain America? Great. To trick him into giving him the staff. Great. Guys, all right, wait, 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 we're not we're not being descriptive enough. Okay, first of all, guys, Robert Redford was the big baddie in Winter Soldier, which is arguably the best Marvel movie ever. Yeah. Okay? He made an appearance back. Came out of retirement because Robert Redford said, hey, yo, yo, I'm done with this shit. I'm like 90. Yeah. You know what I mean? Came out of retirement, and it was fucking great. All right? In, and in Winter Soldier, Cap had an iconic scene of fighting a bunch of fucking S.H.I.E.L.D. agents or Hydra agents. Nice say. to see Crossbones again. Yeah, in the elevator. And he was in the elevator with the same people again, with the exception of the bald guy with glasses. And, uh, still and, well, sit yeah. wells. And we all thought that, they were, that he was going to recreate that fight scene, but instead, like, he, he grabs the Tesseract and, um, and says, Hail Hydra. And, is and, is, is and that a shout-out to Secret Empire? I, th- I I thought a secret empire, but I, don't I the minute he said that I thought yeah. a secret empire. Yeah, I thought a secret empire too, but the whole elevator was like whatever. So listen, guys, it it, it, it here's the deal. We should we probably should have said this up front. This is this review is so like all over the place right now. People are gonna be like, what the fuck happened? So basically, if you did not know, Thanos fucking snapped everyone. The Avengers 
gather up five years later in the future to go back and uh, it's too late for this. Yeah, I, I we're know. Already deep in the. I know we're deep in the. We all we're, fucked we're, it all up. We fucked it all up, but but Thanos destroyed the fucking stones. Okay, so basically, the Avengers decide that they're going to use time travel to go Scott get the stones. Lang decides to have a time heist. Yes, to have a time that heist. Is fan, go, dude, that is fantastic. Yes, to go I back in the time and get the different stones God, to friggin' in, in, to to where they were all. And and I guess the Avengers decided that there were three stones in New York at one time and during the Avengers 1 movie. So they were going to go back to that one and get those stones. And that's why they, we got the Tesseract. The Cosmic Cube was there. I forget the name of that one, too. I don't know. Whatever. They renamed them for some reason. And then, of course, the Time Stone over at the Sanct. Oh, seeing Loki, Sanctuary. by the way, was fantastic. Loki was great. And Loki disappeared. Yes. That Again, could be the rat. Could be the Steve, let's talk about the two major problems. Yours is the big, big one because oh. I also had a major problem. But I want to talk about a minor problem here. Go, do it. End of the movie. Oh, by the way, the way they handled Iron Man's death fantastic that he's the one that put on the gauntlet uh the stones on his glove fantastic, was yeah. fucking awesome yeah right uh, they yeah. handled his death great a little hokey but having all the marvel characters there yes. including sam jackson and the kid from uh, the iron kid man from three three yes um yes how about fucking how they did the reverse wrap the should have been there though dude colson should have been there what the fuck yeah i just realized he wasn't yeah Colson wasn't there. Like, what I mean, the fuck? They talked about the show and everything. I know. Which, wow. Yeah. So there's some I hate. Yeah. Uh, they wrath the con and did the reverse thing with uh, this time Tony Stark dying and Peter. Oh, my God. I'm going to get him. Oh, man. Stop. Yeah. Peter Parker. That was great. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With, with. Because, you know, Peter Parker lost his dad early and obviously yeah, yeah. Tony Stark. Man, that was, that was. I mean, even Happy was there. That was great. Yes. All right. But no Colson. I feel that's where the movie should have ended. But they continued and went ahead and ruined Captain America for me. F ruined. Completely. Un and not only ruined, but opened up. Look, they did that Lord. First of all, they did that Lord of the Rings thing, right? Where I thought the movie was going to end 50 fucking different times. Yeah. Which <laughs> really pissed me off because yeah. I was ready. By that time, I was ready to go. My ass uh, hurt. Yeah, you I were. was thirsty. Yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't drink the whole time, the whole day. Cause yeah, because I didn't want to piss during the movie. Listen, and, 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 and let us say, when, when they came out of the scenes, you won't have a time to go. There's no time to go to the bathroom. There's time to piss. That guys. is a lie. There's the, time to The first hour and a half, you Any can go time pee. during the first two hours, yes. go pee. Yeah. All right, listen. This is time travel related, though. No. Go on. This is about Captain America's character. Okay, go. So at the end of the movie, where it should have ended with the, with with the goodbye to Tony Stark, with a goodbye to, to to Iron Man, right? Yes. It continued. Yes. Because they wanted to give Captain America his peace, and the way they did that is so. What happened is, in order for, and we'll expl we'll go into this during the time travel stuff, um, in order for there not to be a bunch of different realities branching off you had to return the stones to god it's so stupid because it doesn't matter if it, br it branches off by thanos being fucking dead in the future anyways he had to return the stones so they give captain america the stones and they're like all right cap go put them fucking back right which right back where you found them yeah at the exact time yeah go put them back like you saw everything they went through to get these goddamn stones and captain america is going to go ha hang out with Red Skull, apparently. And be like, hey, what do we do about the stone, Red Skull? Nice to see you. Anyways, that doesn't matter. So when they're going to pull him back, and in, in after he's supposed whatever, he doesn't reappear. He Right? And they're like, what the fuck? And all of a sudden, they see an old man in a bench. And who goes over there? Bucky. No, not Bucky. Falcon. Falcon and, and Falcon and Bucky went with him. No, but B Bucky hung out in the background. No, no, no. He doesn't go up to them. They, they, they're back there. And then Sam Wilson goes up to Captain America. I keep calling him Sam Wilson instead of Falcon because you guys will see. And uh, apparently he's an old man. And Captain America, when he went to the past, decided to stay there and to get with his long lost love and wipe children out of existence. To be fair, and I read some things afterwards, we don't know that if the kids that we knew in Winter Soldier weren't his kids. He couldn't have changed time, so he would have also had to know that his best friend Bucky was captured and being tortured the whole time he was fucking her. 
Also, Tony Stark just died, and he knows that, which means there's a huge leadership gap in the Avengers. Captain America would never have abandoned them to go fulfill his his desire to be with, with what's her name? Peggy. Peggy, which was great that they included her. But um, but how about the fact that when he was... So, like, so it feels like dereliction of duty, right? It feels like Captain America is abandoning Captain being Captain America in yes. the worst way possible, yes. right? He knows everything that's going to happen and, and just lets it happen. And lets it happen. And here's the thing, like... And, and doesn't even go back to help them rebuild rebuild the world after what happened with Thanos. Yeah. Um. These people are his friends are going through some emotional stuff. Like Black Widow dies in this movie. Yes. Which was completely unexpected. Yes. Uh, Iron Man just died, and he doesn't come back. He like abandons everybody. Yeah. So he in a sense dies too. Right. And and so Tony died, who at one point was leading the Avengers. Yeah. Natasha Black Widow dies, who was leading the Avengers, who which I thought was great. Yeah. Oh, but. Go on, keep going. I love that. Keep going. And then, so Captain America would obviously be the guy to lead the Avengers, so no. They ruin his character, he does something that's completely out of character, and then he gives his fucking shield to Sam Wilson, and I lost it. And at that moment, I all the goodwill I had to the movie died. And I know that's that sounds uh, as a stupid thing for me to... To be like really agitated with, but I really, really wanted. First of all, I always had a problem with Falcon being Captain America. Yeah, and right? it, it's not a black white thing, kids. My my problem right? is that he remains Falcon. Yes. Be one or be the other. Be Cap or be Falcon. Don't try to be Falcon with a shield. I I don't enjoy that. And I know that I said my favorite part was Captain America picking up the hammer, but I didn't like that because he became Thor. I like that because it showed that he was worthy. It showed that he was pure. Yes, that's why I like that. Yeah. So I'm not I'm not contradicting myself here because I know some fuck is gonna say that. Yeah, but 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 you do like Bucky with the sh- with the shield. And Bucky is Cap because he becomes Captain America. Yeah. So Buck. So it's okay for Winter Soldier to be Cap, but not Falcon be Cap. Right. And the thing is, while that's both, but yeah, while both of them have precedent in the comics. I think that Bucky, as Captain America, was, is gonna is a way more interesting Captain America than Falcon. And and listen, guys. And this is from reading the books, right? Like, isn't your favorite Captain America the Bucky Captain America? The you Bucky, like him even more than than Rogers. The Bucky Captain America was amazing, written by Ed Brubaker, like a really good run. You know, the Winter Soldier exists because of Ed Brubaker, mm-hmm. and obviously, it was a great enough story to be incorporated into the MCU. Uh, and listen, guys, it's. It's kind of like kept the Captain Marvel paradox here. Like the comics give a nice little like story of what what people actually like and what they don't like. People are really not huge fans of Captain Marvel because no one buys her book. They're just not interested at the end of the day. It's like the, it's like the fucking Inhumans. No matter how much you shove the Inhumans down our throat, we really don't want it, you know. Mm-hmm. And Falcon. Uh, Cap, uh, um, Sam Wilson, Captain America, that comic book just was not a, su- a successful comic book. People just did not embrace it and like it as much. And it, 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 it's not a race thing. It has nothing to do with that. It just, it just didn't feel right to have Falcon be it, that it, character. It just didn't read it well. It felt forced. It was just not good. I mean, to the point that they had to bring back Steve Rogers with some crazy bullshit story. I know. Captain America Reborn was horrible. 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 And and because I don't think they were expecting it. Yeah, I don't think that they were, they thought that they were going to have to bring back Captain America so soon. I know, but Bucky as Captain America was a great story. People embraced it. They loved it. And when they were getting rid of that and bringing Steve back, people were pissed. Yeah, they were upset about that. You know. So, um, and at the end of the day, I don't think we can argue that Captain America has a closer relationship with Bucky than he does with Sam Wilson. Like, granted, Sam Wilson's his boy. There's no question there whatsoever. But, like, Captain America created, uh, uh, committed treason in, in Civil War to protect Bucky because Bucky was being framed and brainwashed. And, and, and this just kind of, like, leaves, like, the character of Bucky just nowhere now. I know. He's just... I mean, we're going to see in this show that they're doing on Disney+. Plus, mm-hmm. You know? And maybe they'll address that. We'll see. But, you know, I think... I think Falcon getting the shield again, like A Force, was a political move. And, and I just, I don't think it works. And 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 the reason it does, like, here's the thing: if I'm gonna see the show, if in the show he's dressed, however, yeah. and he's Captain America throwing his shield and jumping around, that's gonna be great. If he's fucking flying around, like, no, okay, I'm not with it because I, I just, I don't know. 
it just that bothered me. And uh, what do you think about Captain America? Do you think? I mean, th- I mean, the thing is, is that also Sam Wilson is not a super soldier. He's a regular human being like you and I. Versus mm-hmm. Bucky and Steve Rogers, you know, they they have super strength. They're 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 more, they're they're they're, they're tougher against punches. You know, they 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 could take a a hit better than Falcon. Someone hits Falcon, he's fucking dead. So do you, you think? Uh, so what do you think? Do you think that they botched Captain America's character with him doing what he did? Or it didn't bother you as much as it bothered me. It didn't bother me as much as it bothered you, but I think they did botch it because, yes, I thought it was a beautiful moment for him to go back and be with Peggy because that's what he always wanted. He got his last dance, you know? He said but he shouldn't. He said at the end of First Avenger, you know, I'm coming back and we're going to have that dance together. But he never got that dance. And he should never have that dance. And that's that how dance, the movie ended. He got the dance. He should never have gotten that dance. There's something beautiful and poetic about There's that. There's something more beautiful about his sacrifice, Yes, but ho- however, ho- however, the fact that— His sacrifice, he didn't sacrifice shit then. Yes, Granted, and the fact that he let all the problems of the world happen during his life is a horrible jab at his character. I agree 100%. I just, you know what I'm saying? Like, Captain America, the character is great because he gives everything yeah. for I, us, I agree. Right? I agree. For I us. agree. That's what makes him great. And I now agree. he didn't give shit up. Yes, I agree. I'm with you, dude. I'm with you. I will say this, too. Um, another thing that I... that. that that uh, I hated that I forgot that's unrelated to what I'm going to talk about is Black Widow crying in like the first five ten minutes like she was so upset let's keep this clear Black Widow is an insane as- assassin okay she is tough as fucking balls alright nails like like you can't fuck with Black Widow and guess what all the people that she cares about have ever cared about in life they're still alive Captain America Hawkeye fucking Bruce Banner all those people she cared about she felt a connection to they're all alive they didn't die in the snap so why the fuck is she crying yeah why'd you make her cry guys come on Feige I don't know anyways okay now the big elephant in the room alright you know who should have been crying the whole fucking movie Rocket Raccoon yeah cause he lost everybody <laughs> he lost everybody fuck listen I know this review is super long guys I apologize you know we apologize but there's just a lot of, lot of, lot of ground to cover here the big my biggest gripe with this Wait, fucking before you go there we have to we have to present it correctly go I want you guys to understand that this movie spent a lot of time talking shit about time travel movies go ahead they spent a lot of time tra- talking about how awful other time travel movies are and making fun of them Yes, they talked about time travel. They tried to explain it. They tried to put some logic behind it. I, they set rules up. I did some reading, and and the writers of the movie actually in real life uh, consulted quantum physicists to see uh, to check these theories on time travel and to to add some actual real scientific jargon, I guess as you would say, to the theory. But this a movie, pops. this movie fucked up time travel. So bad. Bad, horrible. So fucking bad. So bad. Look, I'm wearing my Back to the Future shirt right now. It's no. For those of you who know me, Back to the Future is my favorite fucking movie. And it's not because I'm in love with the DeLorean. It's not because I was a kid when it came out. It's not nostalgic. It's because it truly is a great movie. And it tackles time travel in a way that makes sense. Now, let's make this clear. We all know time travel is fake. We all know it's fictitious. It's science fiction. It's not real. You're wrong about time travel. But but hold on. There's There's... None of us could say that we know what is and what isn't time travel because it doesn't exist. So what you may think is time travel and the rules of time travel can differ from mine. And at the end of the day, neither of us know. We both can shut the fuck up. However, the rules that we have come to know from movies... Wait, wait, wait. What? We're going to disagree on this because I believe that Back to the Future gets it wrong. Yeah, I know you do. So we, we do, we do disagree right. on this. I understand that. I But... But so because you can't say the rules we've come to know. Right, yeah, but but listen, all right. So I think it's fair to say that the majority, and I think you can agree with this, the majority of people on this planet that understand time travel think that if you go back in the past and change something, it affects the future. Which is what I don't agree with. I don't think that's correct. Or if you kill your pa- your past self, your future self ceases to exist. Right. Which it's a paradox. Which is why I don't believe it's possible. Yes. I mean, we're talking about time travel. I shouldn't get this heated. But here, here's the thing. The way that the Avengers presented time travel was the way that 12 Monkeys presents time travel. Which explain for them what is Right. That. So in the beginning of the movie 12 Monkeys, you see a little kid, and he's watching Bruce Willis and I forget her name running through an airport get gunned down. 
right? You the, you fast forward in the movie Twelve Monkeys. They're sending Bruce Willis's character back in time, and everything he does leads to that moment in the airport where he gets gunned down. That little kid was Bruce Willis watching himself get gunned down. No matter what happened, it was inevitable. Right, which is great because Thanos keeps saying it. I am inevitable. Right, no matter what you do, time accounts for itself. Right, so if I went back in time and changed something, this would stay the same because this accounts for the fact that I went back in time. That is what Avengers was saying. Avengers was saying that it's inevitable what's going to happen. And then they did time, they did Back to the Future. And then they just went some... I don't know what they did. Basically, they invented time travel. Tony Stark just came up with it. Like, just sure. like, like uh, hey, flip this, flip this. Ah, it works. Oh, my God, I figured out time travel. Sure. How amazing. Yeah. Because we'll go back to Ant-Man here, who gets out of the quantum realm and, and comes up with this great idea for a time heist, which we all loved, you know? And he said, hey, in the quantum realm, time is different for me. You know, what was five years for you was five hours for me. Are you guys with me so far? Mm -hmm. So let's rewind even farther. If that's true, how come Janet Vine Dine, the original Wasp, is the same age as Michael Douglas? Because she spent 20, 25 years in the fucking quantum realm. So what was 25 years for Michael Douglas? Shouldn't that be a day? For Janet Vine Yeah, Dine? they created a plot hole. Oh, okay. A lot of them because they didn't... All right, that's the first fucking thing. Second fucking thing. All right, this movie ripped off Back to the Future Part 2. And I say that because basically they went back to previous movies from different vantage points, which is exactly what Back to the Future Part 2 is. Which, don't get me wrong, I loved it. I loved going back to Avengers. As much as I hated Dark World, I liked going back to Dark World. You know? Those were fun parts, right? Yeah, they were great. Okay. All right. Another thing I fucking hate. They took the Time Cop. All right, Time Cop. You guys remember Time Cop, right? They took the Time Cop way of time traveling, where basically you and I can snap fingers and zip up into a whatever and then pop up anywhere in the universe. Versus in Back to the Future or uh, uh, or, or Term or, no Terminator kind of takes that, 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 that approach also. Yeah. But basically, uh, I like the approach where, like, if I go back in time or I go into the future at this in this geographic location, I remain in this geographic location, but in that new time. Dude, I kind of want to do a, a time travel movie marathon and rate time travel movies. Dude, I'm all for it. I'm, I love time travel. I just, I just, I was like, man, I really want to watch Looper again. I've never seen Looper. Cool. I need to watch that. I own it, but I haven't seen it. Uh, but okay, so like, like, and and. That's like they they reference Back to the Future in the movie. They reference Terminator. They shit on Back to the Future. They reference the Time Cop, you know, uh, and they did shit on Back to the Future. They did not reference Twelve Monkeys. I was or Looper that. or Looper, yeah. Maybe. Because or Primer because they got it right. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, okay. And here's the problem, guys. So they invented time travel, and they could just if they have pin particles, they could just use them now. You know? So let's talk about all the paradoxes that were created in this movie because no. of time travel, how it ruins everything, how it fucks. What, how are they going to explain this, or are they just going to forget you first? Well, I already mentioned Janet Vine Dyne. You go. Okay. No record. I guess they still exist, right? Yeah. I Why are they? I don't know. Why okay. did they come to the save the day with them? I don't know. I don't know. How about this? How about the fact that past Thanos went to the future and died? Does that mean Infinity War didn't even happen? It didn't even happen. I don't know. How is it supposed to happen? I, it didn't. So Black Widow's not dead. Is she? I don't know. I don't know either. Maybe they're going to do Avengers that search for Black Widow. I don't know. <laughs> Wait, how about this? How about fucking... Um, um, uh, oh, you just threw me off with that. <laughs> I'm thinking about Star Trek. Now. I know, right? <laughs> That's all I can think about. I, uh, Fuck. Damn. Uh, Black Widow um, time travel problems that they created. Oh, yeah, I know. Oh, but, but, you, you know. The snap didn't happen. No, well, Infinity War didn't happen. We already established that. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait. Future Nebula kills past Nebula. Does that mean? Yeah, what ha what's that? Exist? What does that mean? I don't know. What does that mean? I don't know. So many things. What else What else, What else? else shouldn't have happened now that they did all this stuff? I mean, I figured that when... Doc wait, 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 wait. Loki disappears with the Cosmic Cube oh. in Avengers 1. Holy shit. So, wait, wait. Yeah. So, does that mean Dark World doesn't happen? Does that where's mean, Loki? Does that mean Thor Ragnarok doesn't happen? I don't know. Where's Loki? Because if I remember correctly, oh yeah, that's Loki right. saved the day in Thor Rag in, in Thor Dark World. Yeah, by faking the death thing, and and at the end of the day, he he also helped 
in Thor Ragnarok. Right. Huge, huge part of the plot. Yeah. So does Asgard exist? I don't know. Is there no hell? Is Valkyrie the queen of Asgard now? Still. Is Odin still alive? Oh. Uh-huh. Because you know, if you remember, Loki kidnapped Odin and put him in an old folks' home so he could be the ruler. Right. But now Odin never left Asgard. Sure. That which means Odin never went to his Odin sleep. Never. Oh my God. So many questions, guys, that Kevin Feige and the MCU gave us by butchering time travel. By not following their own rules. Yeah. But see, I don't want to. I have a, I have a problem comprehending it. Like, the Ancient One really tried to explain time travel to Bruce Banner and why things need to go back to where they are because if not, those things branch off into an alternate reality. You know? They, they, they really tried to go the multiverse way of explaining this and i just it 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 i'm having a hard time putting that stuff together you know so basically i guess what they're saying is that infinity war still did happen but now just on an alternate earth which means there's an earth that still exists where the snap was never but undone the, the, the right and the problem is that she warned that she couldn't let that happen but and she and she lets it happen because now there's two realities. So, there's, there's, but here's there's, the problem: she says if the Infinity Stones were put back in the time where they were taken, there is no branching off. But that's a lie because the obvious branching off is that they killed Thanos. Yeah. Like them killing Thanos in the future ruined it all. All of it. All they should have figured out a way for these guys to go to the past. Yeah, which means even Guardians of the Gal with the Guardians of the Galaxy wouldn't get together because if you remember. Yeah. That's true. Star Lord got the, the Power Stone, and then Gamora was sent by Thanos to take the Power Stone, and that's where Rocket and Groot met on that planet, and then they all met in that prison together. Yeah, and, and would 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 Star Lord had even been looking for the stone if he hadn't been hired to go find it? Exactly. There's so many things, and would Ronan have went bad to try to take over the stone, or like, there's like. They they kind of undid everything that they've been building up the last ten years, right? It, and that's the big problem here, guys. And that's what makes this movie flawed. And that's why it's not perfect. And that's why everyone sucking its dick really pisses me off because they're basically shitting on everything they've come to know and love and got to this point. Now, does it deserve an eight out of ten? Yeah. No, it's, it's a great movie. It's a it, great. It deserves an eight out of ten. It's a great movie, but it does a disservice. It's to, not a ten out of ten. No, and it does, but it does a disservice to the history of the MCU. Right, and and it, and it gives it gives the MCU an excuse to do whatever they want moving forward. Because hey, something goes wrong, time travel, and then if they don't use time travel, then why not? And, and it just feels like it feels like it's gonna the the a, a great thing about the the Marvel universe is it's it hasn't felt convoluted. Yeah. Right. It does now. Yeah. Because there's so many threads that might not be explained. This is what happens in the comics, right? And I think that Marvel did a great job avoiding that until now. Everything happened, for the most part, chronologically. Everything made sense. But now, is Black Widow alive or dead? We we really can't know that. And even though Hawkeye asserted that, we can't know that. Yeah. Once Cap returns that stone. Like... There, there's so many problems that they created themselves you know, in the future. And to your, to your point also, and you brought this up uh, briefly in this, and you, and we talked about it uh, we, when we sidebar, is when Cap brings the Soul Stone back, guys, he's bringing it back to his arch nemesis, the Red, the skull. Red skull. Like, how's that gonna go down? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean, like, like there's a lot of what the fuck things happening here. You know what I mean? That yeah. I, does he have to knock out? Star Lord, how's that stone getting put back? How's any of this being put back? You know, it makes. It, and plus, like you said, if they were going to steal the stones, just like steal it from the collector. Yeah, yeah, they didn't even need to go to to uh, fucking uh, 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 Thor: The Dark World. They could have just went to the collector's yeah, thing. Yeah, he had like two or three of them. He had two of them. He, he had the Power Stone, and he had the Ether. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There was no. It, it, it was. It, it, it drives me fucking insane. It really does. It really does. That they, it, It's kind of a cop-out. It's kind of poor writing. It's like a cheating way to go out. And um, and the fact that nobody is recognizing it, everyone is thinking this movie is amazing. They're thinking it's better than Infinity War. Sorry, it's not better than Infinity War. I liked it more than Infinity War. You did? Yeah. No way. No way. Yeah. No way. Infinity War is near perfect. How about this, though? Donny Cates, who came to sign in our thing, you know... Uh, said that the thing that would make Infinity War perfect was if Thanos actually 
disappeared in his snap as yeah. well. And that's what actually ended up happening at the end of uh, mm -hmm. end game there. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. Your buddy, Donnie Cates. Yeah. Man. Love yeah. Uh, so, I mean, here's what here's what I think the future is going to be like. I think Adam Warlock's going to appear in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three finally. And I think, you know, the Infinity Stones still exist. They're still out there. There's just no Thanos to go gather them. And I think Adam Warlock is going to create the Infinity Watch to guard the stones. I think they're going to let go of the stones. I hope they do. I, mean, I hope they start preparing for something else, something better. They're still out there, though, now. So basically, what that means now is moving forward, Strange still has the Eye of Agamotto. Which is fine. Which means, I don't even know if there's a fucking Asgard. I'm so confused by that. Real, real quick, uh, now that uh, they basically got rid of the Avengers, the original ones. Yeah. I mean, Thor excluded, obviously. Apparently, Thor is going to be in the The Guardians. Asgardians of the galaxy. Yeah. Which is fine. Yeah. Um, who's your favorite Avengers? Mine's Doctor Strange, by far. The new one? Uh-huh. From the new group? From now going forward, who's, who's like, I love Doctor Strange. Uh, Winter Soldier. Okay. Yeah. I love Winter Soldier. I think he's great. I mean, if he stays in. I mean, haven't you seen they've been cutting him slowly since... Uh, they really part, have. Yeah. And Sebastian Stan does a great job. He does. So. As Winter Soldier, Sad. too. Um, you know, for, to be clear, Vision is dead. We can agree on that. We don't know. Although, yeah, the stones still exist. So we don't know. I, I don't... Dude, I'm so did lost. Did Thanos... Did he ever get to Wakanda and rip it out of his fucking head? I don't know. See, that's just it. So if Thanos doesn't exist, Age of Ultron still happened, maybe... Which means Vision still exists? No, Vision can't exist because he doesn't... Or unless there's two stones now. Are there two... What's a yellow stone? What is it? The Mind Stone, right? Mind Stone, right. So is there two Mind Stones now? I, dude, I don't know. There's so many fucking, like... You almost need to draw a chart. You know, to try to figure this out. Because but Vision, they would have never had to figure out that Vision could exist apart from the Mind Stone. That would have never happened. But the only reason... How did Ultron? Get I mean, they're obviously bringing him back because one division. Okay, it could it could have taken place between Age of Ultron and Infinity War, though. That's that. oh, when they were lovers. Yeah. Which that's what it would probably be, to be honest. Weird. But see, you see our frustration here, guys, and we shouldn't have that frustration after watching this movie. This is the culmination of everything we've been wanting to see for the last ten years. Something we were looking forward to. I'm not gonna lie, our expectations were through the roof. On this fucking movie. And to, to say they would be met, I think, is a high bar to reach. We knew ev all of our thoughts and ideas weren't going to be met. This was like, this is, a, this is like the Matrix Revolutions for me. You know what I mean? Like, we saw the Matrix, Matrix Reloaded, and we had all these theories on how the Matrix was going to end. And we were so hyped up for it. And then it came out and we're like, that, Jesus. that's it? That's how they're doing this? Like, Neo is fucking just... <laughs> to be fair... To be fair, though, I will give the Russo brothers this. It does feel like a goodbye. Like, Absolutely. To the Avengers. Absolutely. Um, as a fan, not as a movie goer, as a fan, they closed every fucking thread that I'd imagine they needed to close going forward. And they put almost every single person in that they we've met over the They put everyone in here. And, and everyone got, even at least if it was like 30 seconds yeah. a minute, everyone got. And, and going Except Coulson. So, except Coulson. So going forward, man... Anybody that doesn't return, this movie was good enough to say bye to them. And so it's a huge achievement. And for the most part, they give us a lot of cool scenes, a lot of great things. I, I'm just so bothered by the time travel thing that it ruins it as a movie for me. But as a fan, I really, really loved it. And I think it was a good goodbye. I'm bothered by a time travel thing as well. And it does ruin the movie for me as well. Also because it's it's such a, a huge centerpiece of the movie. It, it's the spine of this movie. Without the time travel plot point, there. This movie doesn't exist, and they botched it up so much. And for that reason, I don't think this movie is as amazing as everyone's making it out to be. Uh, I think it's great. Still, I want to watch it again. I do. You know, I'm I'm drawn to it, even though it's driving me fucking insane. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's the best movie. I don't even think it's in the top three. Um, but uh, but 
it's it's still a, it's still a good movie. Uh, I I think some people were a little overly emotional when we saw it. Uh, there's definitely paradoxes all over the place. There's what the hell is going on. I think there's a lot of missed opportunities in this movie as well. Um, given the fact that they acquired Fox, this was a good opportunity to. I just they, they probably couldn't get it done fast enough, and and they don't want to get locked into casting. They don't get it. They don't have to show anything. It just, what do you think about the end? The the post credit sound. The anvil against the. I think that was just a throwback to Tony. Working on the working iron on the, suit. the Mark One. You know, okay. it's the same exact noise. I think it was oh, just okay. way to just, just, just to loop it. Okay. You know, we've come full circle. This is where we started. This is what started this whole thing. This is where we ended it. We nice. don't need a post credit scene because we don't want to. You know. So going forward, Russo brothers are going to be able to do whatever the fuck they want to, right? Uh, they're doing a lot of things that aren't even tied to the MCU anymore. No. They, they they have they have the keys to do whatever they want now. And by the way, that the trailer for that new Russo brothers movie looked. Oh, that show with with T'Challa. Chadwick Bosman, yeah, the, the twenty-one, TV, whatever it is. Yeah. yeah, who cares? Yeah, guys. So there it is, Avengers Endgame. Uh, I'm sure I forgot to say a bunch of shit that I can't stand about time travel in this movie. Um, and so much of it bothers me as it does Wonski for different reasons because we both do have different um, ideas of the way we would like time travel to function if it ever did function. Uh, but either way, uh. Um, they shit on it hard in this movie, and for that reason, um, it's not it's not my bag of tricks. It's not the best one, there. but still go see it. Of course, it's a great movie. At the end of the day, it's fun. It does get fan service like fucking crazy, and uh, emotional. Yeah, it's emotional at times. There's, there's times. Uh, and uh, dude, another problem, real quick. Speaking of Cassie, is all of a sudden like 18 years old. Yeah, that was wasn't she like eight? Yeah, <laughs> in like Ant Man and Was. Yeah, that's crazy. Like, uh, in five years, she just blossomed by ten? You know next week's Detective Pikachu. Is that next week? Yeah, Already? Next Jesus fucking Christ. All right, guys. Anyways, so... Uh, oh, what? Spider-Man Homecoming being the end of Phase 3. So Far weird. from home? Yeah, far from home. Weird. That, that's what they say. I don't know it's if it's going to be. I don't think it's going to be that's the so, end of Phase It's so three. off-putting. I kind of don't want to see it. I don't think it's going to be. I'm going to see it, but I don't really care anymore. I, I blew my load... Yeah, yeah, whatever, guys. All right. So, anyways, uh, go watch Endgame. Uh, sorry, this review was all. This review was all over the place. Kind of like that. Kind of like time travel in Avengers Endgame. It was all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> because there's just so much to say, and we didn't we didn't know what order to go in. So apologies, but I'm sure you guys were, were saying go see the movie. Uh, and anyways, for Tom Pop featuring Family Little Boy, I'm Steven. One later.